The homelessness problem is a problem that is not unique to Sebastopol. This is a huge and significant and very serious issue that we're dealing with. We've been dealing with Morris Street and the street campers there for a number of years. The Morris Street issue, when we pay taxes and we live here, what I don't want to look at is those trailers. Constituents deserve to have peace and not worry about an RV rolling up and parking in front of their house. This is a terrible, terrible, terribly complicated and painful situation for everybody. You know, they're not there because they want to. They're there because right now they have to be. So I had to move out and I wasn't sure where I was going to go. I was lucky enough to have someone donate this RV for me to live in. So it works out good. It's all right. I've lived in Sebastopol for 20 years, and I've worked here in many different places in town and only been homeless for about a year. The neighbors, the people that live here are all, they're all fine people. We're just like everybody else. A lot of us have lived in this community for many years. Some of us were born here, and then there's some people who are just new here, but they've been shuffled along to the next spot. I just got it like uh, I've had it a month. Yeah, people definitely look down on you. I mean, if I was a, a normie or whatever you want to call it, I, I might be a little intimidated by this area. You, you know what I mean? Regardless of, of what the nature of the people really are. I mean, if it's not something that you've seen, it looks like a bunch of, you know, gypsies or, or, or something, you know, and it might bug me too if I was, you know, a long-term homeowner or something here. I mean, I don't know how I'd feel about it. I have to say, as someone who uses the bike paths and the park, I'm appalled. I, again, I understand that they need a place, but whenever they're, excuse me, I don't want to say they, I don't want to group them all together. They're individual people with different needs and wants, and I understand that. But we all have a responsibility in society to keep it clean for others, for ourselves, when they took this over and no one said anything, the sidewalk couldn't be used anymore, the bike path couldn't be used anymore. You look at the trash, I mean, we, we give a dumpster over there for people to use, there's trash everywhere. That's what upsets me personally as a concerned citizen. And then that's why people don't want this in their neighborhood, because this is what ends up happening. It's a conundrum that I think we all know exists in our country, especially with the prices here in California. And I don't have a quick fix, but it doesn't make it okay to take over a community. And I think getting it out from here after seeing what happened is very important. You don't want to be the biggest slobs in the world, that's for sure. Some of us are worse than others, and so you gotta make up for it, you know? There are people that decide to drive by honking their horn and yelling out disparaging comments. It's embarrassing, it's frustrating, it's, it's demeaning to have people yell things like, you don't belong here, you have no right to be here. I mean, what's the point of doing that to anyone who's already having a hard time? I don't know if you know, these people never struggled or, or what, but I, I, I mean, I don't, don't wish it on anybody to be homeless, you, you know, but it would be justified if, if they could understand it, you know, if that's what would it, it would take to, to make somebody have a little compassion for, for everybody that's on the street, you know. Everybody has their own story, you know, and, and there's mental illness, there's, you know, like my, mine's just, you know, a freak accident. I mean, it changed the whole course of my life, you, you know. I didn't ask for it and, you know, I didn't deserve it, but that's what happened, you know. And so I'm just trying to, trying to get back to where I was. Because that, that's what we're supposed to do is, is help each other, I think. You know, that's, that's, that's what I was taught anyway. You know, and it seems like somewhere along the way, like people forget that, that we're, we're all people, you know, and, and that's really what it's about, you know.
the next step in addressing this issue would be a tiny village that would involve a fence around it, that would have services, that would have a manager, that would have a social worker, and that would have rules and regulations. So this was offered as a temporary solution to the issue of unhoused people parking along the Morris Street in downtown area, but actually all parts of our city. We've been thinking about this idea for a long time, for a really long time. You already got the little parking spots right there. Just gotta use your imagination, you know? But uh, they're getting the ground ready and they're putting up fences. Once they do that, they're making a spots for everybody, about 20 of them. And after that, everyone's gonna move in. So we just tell them in and they start living here. It's getting people to be better in life, to actually have a place to stay for a while and put their stuff where it's not gonna be stolen so they can actually go get a job. They're gonna get help. They're gonna be better. It's a great neighborhood. People all know each other. Uh, it's, it's a great little community. I, I liked it a lot. We organized a neighborhood group that uh, did go out and get legal help. There's a very good case. We tried to get an emergency stop, which they did not approve. It's just to let people know it's still going on. My main concern is that this is a big project that was put literally in my backyard. And I was not consulted or even warned about it. I'm a homeowner less than a half a mile away. It's really upsetting. I am asking you to not approve the operational agreement tonight for the Saves RV Village. It's an absolute outrage. It's so out of touch. You're describing this project as like some sort of Disneyland for homeless people. Uh, it's absolutely surreal. Sebastopol is very generous with very good intentions and the way that Morris Street was developing and just the troubles they were having down there. And I think that was a major concern of city council that they desperately wanted to clean that up. And I understand. I understand there's a need for housing. I get that, you know, and low income housing, uh, especially around here. I just want to be part of the conversation. You know, it's my, uh, it's my neighborhood it's my yard. It seems kind of like an experiment and uh, you know, I'm like a, a guinea pig in the experiment here. Let's see how it goes. For the most part, everybody's just waiting to go up to the village now. So it's pretty cool. It's actually um, something that I didn't think that they'd be able to do. And the scrutiny of the community wrapped around it almost made it seem like it would be something that would never happen. I don't know, it kind of sounds like fantasy, you know, to have a safe place to go to and have, have electricity and water and be able to actually, you know, work and save money in, in a good way. Start to like focus on moving forward rather than like, you know, just the everyday life of, of Morris Street and like trying just to stay out of trouble. I think it's a good model. The community is going to warm up to it, I hope, instead of being so skeptical. And um, I'm, I'm moving up there. Probably, probably this afternoon, I'm going to head up there. When I move my RV to the new facility, I will be able to look for a job because I won't have to worry about what's going on with my RV during the day. It'll be in a locked little community, you know, where we keep track of who goes in and out. We already look out for each other, but there's still strange things that go on. So I hope it works out.
A new, a new uh, chapter. So I get my, I'm gonna be receiving safe parking. So I'll try to use it in a good way. That helps me. And it's good because uh, I know a lot of people here. In due course, I'll fix my, my life. Just have to realize that people are gonna be skeptical at first until they see something different, and so. Hopefully we can show them something different and, and it won't be all disparaging comments and stuff. So maybe we can give them something to be proud of, I don't know. scene and we're just all getting used to the idea of, of, of coexisting here for a while and everybody's kind of readjusting I think. Thank you so much everybody. It's like one big family of people so I've been enjoying actually having some sanctuary and not having to worry about cars driving by and knowing that that we're in charge of what we're doing here you know all these other things are, are so much easier to deal with. I'm stoked that I was able to make it here, you know, it's a, it's a blessing. This is good, it's safe. I feel fortunate to be here. Whether it will be a solution that will help people, I think it will. Um, it's supposed to just be transitional, so we're supposed to be working on stuff while we're here to get us to a better spot. You know, it's okay, it's okay. Having a place like this is really important. As as an example, this place could be a cool experiment for for the community and for for outside this area too. It could be something that could help the homeless situation in California, and maybe help with people deciding to do better with their lives. <laughs> 